Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, welcome to the show, Super Agents Live. If you're new to the show, I'm glad you found it. I hope I deliver value here. And if you don't know, what we talk about on this show is about entrepreneurship. We talk about going out and dominating, conquering your market. And we talk about entrepreneurship through the lens of a real estate agent. Now, today's guest, pretty interesting story. Uh, She's been in real estate for a long time. And and what we talk about, uh, we talk about radio which i actually spent a i was intrigued we spent a lot of time on radio and we talked about and, and for her radio is responsible and i'm when i say radio i'm talking about terrestrial radio i'm talking about getting in your car fm am talk radio whatever uh it's responsible for more than half her business we also talk about why she puts a heavy focus on recruiting and you know we dig into some of her sales strategies um you know uh she does a guaranteed home sale we talk about that how it works uh and how how the mechanically how it works and how well it works for her and we also talk about how she promotes her properties she has gone from 32 million dollars last in the last year 32 million to 56 million I'm sure everybody would love either one of those numbers, but and even the delta there, right? The 32 to 56. How do you do that? That's what we get into. All right, you're gonna love it. Before we get in uh, to the content, let's do a little housekeeping. Uh, if you don't know, the hashtag for this show is unpack that idea. Go ahead, jump on the old Twitter and uh, tweet it out. Use that hashtag. It's a big follow train. Um, uh, the other thing, so this show is going to air. Uh, August 19th, that's on a Tuesday, Uh, our new summer strategy, I'm sorry, our new summer broadcasting release is uh, is Tuesdays and Fridays down from Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just all you guys, everybody's taking vacation, so I'm not going to kill myself getting content out there that uh, not everybody's going to listen to, so, um, uh, and here's what I'm getting at, this episode's going to be released on Tuesday, August 19th, every third Thursday of the month, I do a live Google Hangout at 10 a.m. on the third Thursday of the month. So that's this Thursday. We're gonna do a live Google Hangout with uh, with my friend Chadi Bazi, and here's the topic. Lead generation, how to fill your funnel. I know you guys, I get a lot of questions about that stuff. So uh, tune in, I would love for you to be live with me, and why we're doing this Hangout is because, uh, you know, right now I'm just talking to you, you're just listening to me. You can't, I, you may have questions, but you can't ask me. On the Google Hangouts, you can. So show up this Thursday, 10 a.m. All right. If I don't see you there, I'll see you soon. But let's get to the show. Everybody, today, I'm super excited. You know, we've had people come on the show and talk about all sorts of things. You know, uh, geographic farming, uh, how to uh, market to your sphere. We've never had someone talk about radio. Today's guest has built her business around radio. So I am thrilled to welcome Kathy Toth. Hey, Kathy, thanks for taking the time out today. Our pleasure. Thanks for having us in from Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor. Hey, listen, okay, so well, listen, Kathy, I've given just a brief overview, but you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Let's see, I started in 1989. Um, I've got a master's in business administration, maybe a hindrance or a positive, not sure about that. <laughs> Um, last year we closed um, 32 million and we served 152 families. Got it. Um, okay. So and how and so I'm sorry. Uh, when did you start again? Uh, 1989. 89. So you have you have been around uh, a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. I, I've so, watched us go through uh, ups and downs and uh, um, have uh, seen a few things. And there's probably no situation in the real estate world that I haven't encountered and don't have a solution for. So yeah, there you go. I can pretty much, pretty much handle everything. Yep. So you've seen, you've seen some booms and you've seen some busts. Right. And Michigan being one of the leading foreclosure states, we've had a few bad years uh, lately, but we're on a recovery. 
And right now our market is about 7% down from where it was in 2005. Uh, but we're slowly recovering, and I'm hoping that by the end of 2014, we will be uh, at the same level we were in 2005. So hail to the governor of Michigan because it's it's recovering. That's interesting. So, you know, we had Steve Harney on the show and he said he said a, a, a national average I think we were Still 20, you know, again, uh, across country, still like, you know, tw- I want to say 23% off of, you know, 2005, 2006 numbers. So you guys are only 7% off. Mm-hmm. W- w- yeah, we're not bad. So so what about, is it uh, in terms of uh, um, employment, have you guys, you know, are you guys back to where you guys, you know, where we were back in those days or no? No, we're still um, not having the workforce. When we lost the auto industry, we lost uh, the largest number of people exited the state of Michigan, more so than any other state, and we've not recovered those jobs. So we are exchanging some jobs into knowledge workers, and that still is a slow process. So no, we're still at an exit rate here that um, we hope to um, correct. Got it. So how, how, I mean, in your opinion, Kathy, you know, why is, why, you know, so unemployment's not uh, catching up, but the the market is, you know, the real estate market in terms of prices is getting back to, you know, that, that high level of 2005. How do you think that's happening? Well, we've got a couple of good things still happening. Luckily, the interest rates, um, or forcefully, if the government is involved, I'm not sure, uh, the interest rates are still uh, attractive, around 4%, so that's helping the buyers stay in the market or or proceed to the market. We also had a lot of people that uh, were in foreclosure or short sale, and they still wanted to stay in the area, and so they have been renting. But those houses are now, um, we're, we're not having the foreclosure market here anymore. So those um, are gone off the market. Our market, we used to be 21% distressed, and last year it was only down to 5%. And even this year, some of the REO brokers are way down in their inventory. Right. So the market is being more healthy, and with that, those bargain deal basements properties off the market, we've got resale homes. Those are what we're seeing now. And because we've got people who have not been able to sell because they've been waiting for the market to recover, those people are now saying, all right, let's move. We can move. And so as soon as their houses, which are in great condition, are put up on the market, we're finding a high pent-up demand. Um, So with limited inventory, we're having multiple offers and we're having opportunities to pre-market homes, which is exciting. Got it. Okay. So, so if we go back to, you know, we, I don't know why we're talking about 2005, but you know, it's okay. So if we go back to 2005, I'm sure your business was humming along and, um, you know, moving into 2008 when the world was melting, you know, as September 08 Lehman failed and, you know, again, everything like it was a scary time. How, what did you do to, uh, what happened to your business? Huh, right. Instead of uh, contracting like the ball with my thumb in my mouth, with my blankie over my face, <laughs> I hired a coach. I immediately picked up the phone and I knew I was in trouble because I went on 54 listing appointments and only seven people were qualified to sell. So I picked up the phone and hired Bob Corcoran and mm-hmm. got his group, uh, flew them out here to meet my whole team. I had uh, employees and I had family to um make sure we survived the tsunami. And the only way I could figure it out is the phone stopped ringing, the buyers dried up, and I did not know what the heck was going on. Unfortunately, I was a precursor. I knew that the market was in trouble early, and the buyers or the sellers, the sellers mostly weren't able to receive the information. Excuse me, Kathy, my house is worth 300 Well, no, actually, <laughs> if you look, it's really two thirty-five, dollars um, And so I was a bearer of bad news and not too popular at that point. So I remember looking at my husband and I said, this is going to kill me. I mean, 54 appointments in February and, and only seven people. I don't know what a short sale is, but seven people can only sell their homes. I can't keep this up. This is tough. So talk, talk to the broker. I said, I don't know what a short sale is, but we've got to figure this one out. So there was a class immediately available next month. And then we started to work on short sales. Interesting. Okay. And then, so, and then did you, uh, so what, again, so what happened? So you, you jumped into short sales early, you understood them. 
did that uh were you one of those people like a guy like a <clears throat> leo priya um or even Pat Hyben, right? They had moderately successful businesses. And then when the crash happened, they immediately jumped on, you know, the, the REO bandwagon, short sales, all that stuff. And they and their business just exploded. Did, did, did that happen to you or did you just kind of, you know, get back to normal? No, we didn't explode because we didn't concentrate on that. But we did get the certified trust property expert, which gave us the confidence to do a great job on short sales. And no, the business didn't explode. We were hovering around a little over 104 units before the market went in the toilet. And then we stayed around 80, 90, 100. So we weren't exploding, but we were poised for growth before the market went in the toilet. So luckily for us, we just hovered around that glass ceiling of around 100 units. Um, and, and we were grateful to be there because our commissions were, uh, down by almost 50%. A lot of these uh, bank owned properties or foreclosures were actually, our short sales were only paying 5% commission. I mean, it was, it was uncharted territory. And then sometimes you'd sell a house three times, right? You know, and get paid one commission. Yeah. All the buyers walked or they lost their job. They had one house, poor little house, five deals, four buyers lost their jobs. While they were getting their financing, had done the inspections, great house, oh, gosh, it passed five times on the inspections, but four buyers lost their jobs. So this was the kind of atmosphere that we were living in, breathing in, and um, so we were doing a lot of work for nothing. But yeah. those times are gone, and so we're we're moving ahead. I We're done with that. We're going to have a positive outlook, right? So, right. Right. So let's talk about you. So you have, I, 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 you know, I looked you up. So you have a couple of interesting websites. You have Kathy Toff and team, uh, or let me look at the URL, just Kathy Toff.com. And then you have mm-hmm. 866 own this. And, um, talk to me a little bit about that because I, I looked on your, let's go to the Kathy Toth. I'm sorry. I said it the wrong way. <clears throat> you know, I went to your about us page cause I, I want to learn about you and you have a video there and it's instead of, you know, that video, why do you have that video? Because what that video is sort of a recruiting video instead of like, hey, hire me, I'll, I'll, I'll do a great job of selling your house. Yeah, I have to look. I don't even know which video I have. I am very blessed because I have a, a ton of videos. I do have a recruiting video. I do have a marketing video. I have, um, hey, hire us as a buyer's agent video. Hmm. Um, all the key areas have been professionally done. Um, uh, so I'm not, I don't remember which okay. video that is. That's okay. Um, I, yeah. I, I was just, I wanted to see if that was some, some sort of your, part of your strategy because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm aware of the K- Keller Williams kind of model. So, um, Well, Tony, it's a great point because I'm not just an agent. I'm somebody that's growing our business. As a CEO, my full-time job is, looking for talent. I need the next two because we've got the listings, the leads, the leverage, and therefore the leverage part is where I'm at. So I'm interviewing probably one person a week for anything, and I would like to have a bench of talent. Because talent, I'm looking for the talent who's going to lynch me if we don't grow. That's the talent I want with my team. Right. Uh, so yes, I'm heavy into, I'll, I'll say recruiting, picking somebody that's going to be a great fit for our culture, getting somebody that likes to, you know, work like I like to work, walk fast, talk fast, and take very good care of our people. So yes, it is a full-time job coaching and recruiting. That that is my mission, quite frankly. That's awesome. Um so um you know you let me ask you this cuz you you put it in the notes when when you booked for the show. You said, "Hey, talk to me about how you promote your listings with pre-marketing." Um well, here's here's what you wrote. "How do you promote your listings with pre-marketing to get the sellers more money? How do you do that? How do you promote your listings, Kathy?" I have a program that we created called Coming Soon. And what we do, if you're my seller, Tony, I'll say great. Hold on. It's it's Toby, by the way. Toby, sorry. That's okay. Thank you. And what we do is we say we'd like to pre-market this home. And I go back into the back door of my CRM and I show you the network of buyers that we have. And I'll say, Toby, look, we've got 4,000 buyers here that are in my network that are looking for homes. And let's go to your particular geographic area and let's go on your price range. So we may have 75 people that are actually eligible or looking for homes. And look, oh, this person was in three minutes ago. This person was in five minutes ago. This person has been in 25 times. This person has favorited a house just like yours last week. So you know what? What I'd like to do with your permission is once we get the uh, pictures uh, done and while you're painting the kid's bedroom, before it actually goes on the market, I would like to be able to mail the information on your house, email to these 75 people tomorrow night or today, whenever you sign the listing contract. Does that work for you, Toby? And then if you say, yeah, great, 
test. And what we'll do is we'll hopefully get some showings before it goes in the computer. And then what we'll do is when it goes in the computer, let's say it's Wednesday and it goes in the computer and we have um, the opportunity to put it in the MLS on Monday, we will say that we're accepting and reviewing all offers by Wednesday at 4 p.m. So now the people in the network get first crack at the ability to come over and make a showing appointment and to see the house. And then the MLS opportunity comes in on Monday. And everybody still gets a fair shake at it. It gives the seller the best of all worlds. It gives the people in the network the opportunity to come in early. They appreciate that. And then you get the highest price regardless. So it's a, it's a win for the buyers in the network, and it's a win for the seller. Can you see how that would be cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would. I, I think if you – this is one thing that I tell the, – the people that I coach, this is one thing that I tell them to – I tell them to include this, right? And, and But what I say, and, and I want your take on this, is th- there's another step to that, at least in my mind, is if you have – so you have your network of buyers, which is mm-hmm. awesome. Um, if you also had a network of other agents, right, and those agents have a network of buyers, right? So if you if you promoted your listing to number one, your you know your database, and then tapped into other agents' databases, I think that would be a powerful combination. You're right, and that is a part of our marketing that we also do. And I didn't mention it because we're part of Showing Time or Showing Dust, and they have the ability for everybody who um, is in our our network here who uses that product to get uh, information on any property. However, it does have to be in the MLS. We oh. Also, in the show desk, right? Because that it has to have an MLS number. However, we do do the marketing to our top key agents in the marketplace. They are, there's about 1,000 agents that do get the emails of the pre-advanced um, homes that are coming up on the market. And sometimes the people that are in our database, maybe those 75 people, Maybe they're exclusively with us, but not always. They may already be working with an agent, and sometimes their agents call to set up the appointment. We're grateful for that, and we want to share and cooperate with everybody. So, of course, we let them see the property. Got it. Okay. Um, and so let's let's. Uh, so your eight six six own this. I'm going to go there right now. Eight six six own this okay. is is about your uh, guarantee. Yes. So what I have is um, a unique number that's easy to remember. So in the radio spot, when they want to call, if they dial that 866-OWN-THIS, uh, it's, it's, remember, it's memorable, right? Yeah. Or it's 866-696-8447, but they're driving and they're not going to figure that out. So if they go to that particular website as well, then they can find out about how we do the guarantee. Um, also, there's a, a voice audio recording. Once they put the extension in 1072, they can actually listen to the program on how this works so that they know how to take advantage of the guarantee because a lot of people don't want to have that catch-22 of owning two homes. So we just explain it. It's in writing, and then if they need more information, they can certainly get a home valuation right from that website. And so, and how, how, um, so let's unpack this a little bit because how, you know, when people call you that, you know, they hear your radio spot and they go, oh man, Kathy's going to sell my house. And if she can't, she's going to go ahead and buy it from me. You know, that's pretty powerful. Mm-hmm. They, they, they call you, you know, how important of a, of a strategy is this for you in terms of just conversions and increasing phone calls? Um, you know, I probably get 40 listings. Uh, from this particular avenue. So I would say that's pretty important. 40 out of, let's see, we sold 70 listings last year. Wow. And again, we sold 150, we moved 152 families. So I would say pretty much everybody wants to know about it. And then once we explain it, and then sometimes I'll go in and give, it, give a guarantee immediately. I'll buy your house on Friday. I'll give you this number. And if they don't want that number, then we talk about the full listing. So it also does, it benefits somebody three different ways. If they're going to do a trade up, it benefits the person who is selling a house and they want to trade up to another listing of mine. So I will guarantee to buy their little house so they can trade up to the big house. And then the other advantage is if they're listed with me and we have a buyer that wants to buy their house, your house, Toby, Mm -hmm. and they have a house to sell. We really don't want to take a contingent offer. So Kathy will go in and buy the buyer's house. So now the buyer can perform non-contingent and buy the Toby house and we're done. And then what we'll do is we'll put the buyer's house on the market for 120 days. And if they can better the offer from the public, 
yay, they can keep the better offer, they get more money. Awesome. But if they cannot get that better offer in 120 days, good news for Toby, no matter what, they are going to close on the 121st day on the Toby house. Kathy's going to buy their house. You're done. We're all happy. Yeah, and and so and look, so um, I had somebody on the show talking about this, and uh, so here's how it works, at least how they explain it to me, right? So, so you have this guarantee. Uh, hey, Toby, list with me, and I just want to talk about the guarantee. The, the the example you just gave me was a little bit a little bit confusing. Um, I understand yep, it, but okay. but so. Uh, so you come to me and say, hey, listen, uh, I call you. I want to sell my house, Kathy. You say, okay, no problems. I'll guarantee I'll sell it or I'll buy it. Now, <clears throat> there's a couple conditions, right? So number one, yeah. you, you explain to me, hey, you know, for me to take this risk on, we ha- I'm going to price your house under what the, the comparables are, number one. Number two, <clears throat> uh, at least that I heard from this other guy, in order for me, Kathy, to take this risk, um, I need not 6%, but I need 10 or 12%. Is is that yeah accurate? No, that's not how it works. So no, I'll I'll price it at the market value. Okay. And then what we'll do is we want to try it at that market value. But if it doesn't work, we have a series of price reductions based on the feedback from the market, the showing activity, and we're going to keep aligning it to the correct value. Okay. So let's say your house is a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And I give you a guarantee of eighty thousand. We want to get you more money than 80, but I know that you're going to get 80 no matter what, because I'm going to pay you 80,000. I'm still going to get my 6% or whatever my commission is, 7%, my normal commission off of that 80,000. But if we can get you more money, that's what I want. So what we're going to do, we've got 120 days to get you more than 80,000. We put it out. we got 30 days. Maybe we didn't get any activity. Oops, we're a little bit too high priced. So we may say, let's go to 95. Next 30 days, now we're going to go to 90. That still didn't work. We're going to go to 85. Whatever I can do to make sure you get more than 80, that's what I want. Because I don't want to buy your house. I don't right. want to own your house. Right. I also want to make sure you get the most money. The other thing is, is if we want to be really smart about homes, to sell any home, we do a pre-certified home, Is and this is regardless of it doing um, the buy it or buy it for cash or whatever, is a home falls apart for two reasons. Either it doesn't inspect or it doesn't appraise. So if I say, hey, Toby, let's make sure we're right on spot with this appraisal, and it did come in at 100000 then of course I don't want to undercut you, but there's I'm taking on the risk. I am going to own your home, but $80,000 is a, is, a, is a nice number. That's because if you take that guarantee, you're able to trade up to your dream house, that Toby home that you are going to love cherish for the rest of your life so you're willing to take the 80 it's a guarantee it's a done deal it's probably the only way you're going to get your dream house because otherwise you're going to be contingent on selling this house right. and Kathy's the bank so it's going to happen for you right but i don't have to i don't have to um underprice your house i'm going to try it at the highest price we have time the 120 days will give us enough time to try to get you the most money how many houses have you actually bought I've only had to buy one house. Thank Again, God. we're going to price it according to the market. We're going to work very hard to make sure that we get you the most money. I don't want to buy your house. So I, and I, we're going to price it correctly. We're going to keep in touch. Every 30 days, we're going to have some adjustment. And you may say, Kathy, I don't care. 82, whatever. I just want it. I want it done. I know that you're going to buy it for 80. If you can get 82, I'll be happy. So it depends on every person how they're motivated. But, right. you know, they're, they're good because they're going to get 80 for it. Got it. That's exciting. So, so you have this message that you that you blast out on the radio. I mean, I and you, you know, forty out of your, uh, forty out of your seventy that you sold, uh, you got through this way. I would say they called directly because of that particular medium. They they know about the guarantee and they call. They ask about it. So. Uh, okay, so you, um, uh, which is awesome. Okay, so you last year you did thirty two million. What are you on track for this year? Um, we're going to be doing 263 families served, and we're going to be on track for 56 million. Good for you, Kath. That is awesome. And and so 32 to 56. That is an incredibly. That is a great rise. How has radio got you there? Well, radio is consistent to about 12% of my total business. Okay. What I find is interesting, Toby, is what I do is I break out my buy side and my sell side. And this is important for all of us real estate agents to know exactly where the money comes from. So the total representation of 2014 total income is 12.8% through radio. 
it is higher on the listing side. So my ads are targeted to sellers because more sellers call on the radio ad. So my listing income from radio this year alone is 15.4%. And then, of course, on the radio on the buy side, it represents 9.1%. So we need listings right now. So my spots on the radio are really hammering down the guarantee. I'm the only one in the area that does the guarantee anyways. So it is my USP, my unique selling proposition. So we're hammering that. And plus, it represents 15% of my total income this year. L- listing income. Listing income. And nine, nine point, it's, how do you do that? 15.4 and nine. How do you know it? Um, I guess you could just do the math, right? I mean, you know how many calls. You just track what comes in through that specific number, and you know that is, is tied to radio. Right. Well, of course, everybody who calls, I track. So I ask you how did you find us? What was the primary reason you came to us? Sometimes you tell me three things. Okay, what was the primary? Right? Because maybe you listen to interactive voice recognition audio on a sign writer. Maybe it's reputation. Maybe it is, you know, my my relative said to call. Or maybe it's I hear you on the radio. And in any way, once we get the check, um, we always track the source. How did that business come to us, that closed business? And so it's just a matter of I divide my listing side and my buy side, and then we track um, every single month what our average sales price is, days on market. So I have that immediately available. So, yeah, total income 12.5%. The listing part for radio is 15.4%. And how how long have you been doing radio, Kathy? 12 years. 12 years. So, it, I mean, it, it, I mean, the ROI is there for you. What, what should people know? I mean, why, number one, why are you, I, I would imagine you're the only one doing the guaranteed sale. Um, are you the only one also doing radio in your market? I'm probably not the only one doing radio. However, it is expensive and I have an exclusive. So my radio personality endorses me. They are a client. And if anybody else is doing radio, I suggest that they invite their personality, their talent into their team. They show them what they do. They really have them all for lunch. They become part of the team. I'm like a partner for the radio station. And as a matter of fact, it's interesting that we're having this call this morning. I was invited in to the radio last Wednesday to be a part of the co-host team. And then this morning again, I was on the radio just dropping in. They told me to come back in again today. So I was on the morning show again, free advertising time, whatever, because they like me. So I'm like a partner. And then immediately after the radio gig, I was asked to come into the sales team meeting and we talked about what the likenesses are in in real estate sales and what the likenesses are for the sales team. There's 10 of them in getting um, radio advertisers and how the sales calls are different, but very much similar and how the structure of a call is congruent for each of us. And we did some role playing together. It was really fun. Um, I'm going to post the Cumulus radio station salespeople picture on Facebook, but um, tonight is American Idol. So they're having a country idol um, song fest, and on June 27th, the contest ends along with cars. The sponsors are um, Suburban and, um, let's see, who else, Bud, Light, and uh, Verizon. So I'm a judge on these um, contests. So, again, I'm a partner, and I get invited back to different arena actually the name of the place i'm going tonight is the arena um to the belmark bowling alley uh katie's bar and grill i mean we get to go out and judge these contests so the the listeners really clearly get to know me Um, i am part of them and the radio station so but the endorsement is where the key is anybody can advertise it's when the person says there's nobody else i'd I'd list with i trust kathy and her team Got it. Okay, so that so that 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 trust there that comes out. Um, so you are in your market. I mean, you are if you're on the radio that much. I mean, you are a personality, right? I mean, that's your brand, Kathy Toth. You know, celebrity kind of, right? It, it kind of is. I went into the um, Washington County Records building to have a meeting with James Rice, who's the um, treasurer treasurer's office there and i said i'm kathy told to meet james and she goes oh kathy with a k because that's how they do my spot yeah. i'm like oh that's pretty funny yeah it's kathy with a k so people do know me i was at the mis which is our michigan international speedway i was all geeked up in a a suit for the car racing because we i went on a car race for 150 miles an hour i have, you couldn't even tell i was human right i look like a, a mars person and i'm getting 
in this line to go get in my car, and they asked me a question. Somebody did, and the person behind me said, are you Kathy from the radio? <laughs> Certainly they never saw my face, but I said, yeah, I am. They recognized the voice. So. How funny. That is so interesting. So earlier, so why don't, you know, I mean, this is not something that, uh, you know, very few agents out there think about radio. Um, and I don't know why. Um, you said earlier that it was expensive. What? I mean, how expensive is it? I mean, it's got to work for you. I mean, 12, 12% of your income uh, comes from radio. Well, it's a heavy commitment. I don't know that I want to share. Oh, sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, no problem. But it, it's a lot of money, and um, it's, it's, a, it's a contract that there's an annual uh, commitment for a 12-month contract. So once I sign it, it's, it's money out the door. Got it. So I have to be very, very careful, especially when we were doing the green light, red light. Is this expense worth it or not? I, that's why tracking is important. Right. I'm like, well, is this gonna, if it's a return of you know, 12 15%, that's pretty good for me. But sure. not only that, it's the notoriety, the notoriety, consistent, duplicatable, predictable. So those are the other parts of um, the, the marketing, the, the things that we need to look out for. So for me, it's been very effective. And at this point, I'm actually looking at perhaps doing another station from another personality. And I've been blessed to have um, Glenn Beck endorse me. And all of those things come together, being on the Dave Ramsey ELP. There's, so there's some credibility immediately before I even walk in the door. Yeah. Um, that And there's money. I mean, I spend my own money to buy houses, clearly. And who else can do that? I have a line of credit from the banks that I don't know too many people. This is not on my personal stuff, just for my business, that, right. that I can say, great, I'll write you a check Friday for 150000 Done, done, done. I'm going to have the inspector come over tomorrow, and um, we can close. I can get the title work done, and you'll get your money and walk away Friday. Wow. Um, so uh, that, how interesting. So what do you do? So you have radio. That's certainly not your only lead channel. Um, what, what, what uh, is there, is there something else that you, that kind of like piggybacks on this radio lead generation channel? Well, um, I have my sources of course, because I track it, but on the, um, overall business at this point, 15% comes from one particular avenue and that's the internet. Um, then the past clients and, um, are, that's 12% at this particular minute. Our reputation is 9%. Mailer business for total business represents about 8%. Personal referral that goes back to the past clients is 7% in addition. Glenn Beck, I, that represents 7% of my income. Agent referrals, another three. And then I go back down to dispose and expires of the rest, basically. Interesting. Kathy, you, uh, <clears throat> this is your MBA talking right now. I mean, this is all these numbers. So <clears throat> 15%, 12%. Is radio, um, or that twelve percent of uh, income is radio? Fifth client. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, twelve twelve percent. Fifteen percent is internet. What what? Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Well, one of my web providers is um, Boomtown, and the yeah. website is called HomeSearchAnnArbor dot com, and uh, I'm blessed because we have a lot of great leads through that. And we have um, the opportunity to convert. My conversion is only 4% right now. Our goal is to increase that conversion ratio. We have had only four buyer's agents for the last year, and we need a lot more. But we want six Navy SEALs, not just anybody. So we're very selective, and that's why I'm interviewing all the time. I want to make sure that we get somebody that's like us, that works really hard and wants to take the business and, and grow. So we have an opportunity to hire two more buyer's agents and possibly another one. Ideally, we'd like to have one person take a whole lead day and have seven key buyer's agents. That way we can spread it out and get one day a week. Everybody in our team is also required to take at least one day off a week. We have a schedule, and you have to take a day off. You that, have to recover. That's Otherwise, awesome. this will fuck you alive, isn't it? For sure. Mm -hmm. Well, look, and if anybody, if you're out there in, in Ann Arbor, uh, uh, reach, out to, reach out to Kathy. Um, sounds like a great place to work. Um, okay. Well, look, uh, just, just to wrap this up here. So uh, you also said that I should ask you about pre-certified homes. Yes, yeah, so um, we've got this pre-certified program where we can have the seller get their home pre-inspected, like I said, from a, a regular inspection company. We can have them appraised, 
and we can also include a home warranty on every home. So if there is something that happens, uh, this particular home warranty company covers pre-existing conditions, and that's huge right now. So if, in fact, we start the process knowing what the appraised value is, we can use that to defend their equity, and, of course, that would, they will be able to overcome the two reasons why a home doesn't sell. Again, it doesn't either appraise or it doesn't inspect. The problem is, is if it doesn't inspect and we have a well and septic issue and the septic field fails, really, are you kidding me? It's um, February and we've got to get a backhoe in. It's winter. We've got frost laws. It's not good, especially with the buyer breathing down our throat. We've got a, an FHA lender involved, and now we may blow up the deal. So if we do these things prior to us getting into the lifting ticket seat, then we can accommodate the repairs at our own pace, shop carefully and get quotes and make sure the house is pre-certified. I mean, if you're going to buy a Lexus pre-owned, it's much better than just another car that's just sitting on the side of the road and whatever. So the public perceives that it's a good deal. They recognize it, that it's pre-certified. And so it's, it's, it's a nice way to go. It also helps the seller know that really the only reason it's going to fall apart is for some crazy reason that the buyer loses their job on the way to closing. So that's interesting. I've never heard anybody that that does this. So you, you, so you have this. So with pre-certification, right? So it gets appraised, it gets inspected, and then you also write it. Um, it also comes with an insurance policy that covers pre, even pre-existing conditions. Is, did I understand that? Yes. Right? Yes. It's um, the company that has this program is called Home Warranty of America, and it's a 13-month program. And they just started doing um, pre-existing conditions. So um, we embrace that, and we tell the sellers about that. And, of course, every deal that we write on, on a buy deal, we always want a, a home warranty to be included so that if there's any unforeseen things that happen after closing. But, yeah, those three things are the, are the key elements of the pre-certified home. Intra- so, so I have a couple questions for that. So uh, if, what about me, right? So I have my house. I have some rental houses. Um, could I go and I don't want to sell my houses, but could I go and get one of these insurance policies to cover, you know, like maybe my roof yep. is going to go bad? Yeah, maybe it will. But here's what we need to do is, by the way, I have them on my investment property. Because in the bad times, many people had to put their houses either up for lease or for sale. And we were using the home warranty plan, and if their house wasn't selling, they were going to end up leasing because they had to have some occurrence. They were exiting out of the state to take a job, for God's sake, excuse my French. <laughs> and we, we, we went to the home warranty company and said, we have a lot of vacant houses. We have a lot of houses that are for lease. And you know what? These people don't want to be property managers. But there's some money here in a home warranty opportunity. Why don't you do it for investment houses? So what I did is I said, if you will do that, I will get four of these policies right now for my own personal rental property. And then the tenant comes in. I say, Toby, you can rent this house. And here's the number, the 1-800 number. If there's an occurrence, what we'll do is we'll split the $100 deductible. If you've got to call a plumber, get the plumber out. You call the 800 number. They're going to send a reputable plumber out. They're going to fix the problem. You and I will take care of the $100 deductible. We're going to split it 50-50. That means you're not just going to call a plumber out every time you feel like it, right, because you've got skin in the game as the person who's renting this property. And we do that up front with the understanding that it's $1,200 a month. Here's this program. If there is a repair, I'm not responsible for 100% of the repairs because with each occurrence, you're going to get a professional out here. You, it's basically better than a full-time property manager. Uh, this company doesn't sleep. If you want something fixed 24-7, you have that with this property. And that is an advantage for some of the tenants because what if I'm in Vegas or what if I'm in oh, yeah. you know, somewhere yeah, else yeah, yeah. out of the country and they can't get a hold of me? Well, they've got a toilet that's overflowing and you know, craziness. So I, I think it's an advantage, but also it's peace of mind for me and my husband because, of course, when I'm out in Aspen, some grinder pump goes bad somewhere and their toilet backs up. I'm like, really? Now he's spending his whole vacation on the phone with the plumbers and the tenants and it's not fun. So I've done it. This Trust was me. a great thing for us. Yeah. yeah, I, you, yeah you get it. And yeah. So but, the home warranty company, yes, they will do that for the renters as well. Okay. So, um, but earlier, I, I don't know if you made, you said it the wrong way, but you said it was $1,200 a month. Did you mean a year? Um, you were talking $1, about hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. You were. I think you were talking about the the cost of the uh, of the of the uh, policy. Oh no, no. It's a thirteen month program, and the cost of the program, I think it's four fifty. That's it. 
I'm I'm yeah. I'm gonna go get five of them. Seriously, um, that's that's I wow. Everybody, I, uh, I ho- ho- and so Home Warranty of America. I'm gonna look at it. Ho- hopefully, they will do something uh, in California. Um, you know. Um, yeah, Molly Stewart. She's my she's my lady. She's um, I think she's vice president. Molly Stewart. She's your she's your girl. She'll make right. it happen for I'm you. I'm gonna call her. All right. <laughs> um, I'll tell her you sent me. Okay. Listen. Um, did I cover did I cover the radio thing enough, or is there is there something I missed on that 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 people should know about? No, I think we've saturated that. The only other <laughs> thing that I have that that is pretty cool, and, and many people do this, is the love it or leave it plan. Okay. And the love it or leave it guarantee works like this. So if you move into a house through us, we help you buy. In the first 90 days, you call and say, we made a bad choice. We should have never bought this house. We made a mistake. Gosh, I don't want you to have to live in that house for the next 20 years. Tell you, let's sell the house. You buy another house with us, and I will list it for free. I will not charge you my part of the commission. That way we can get you to buy another house with us and we will avoid this mistake. Yes, I understand the landscaping was gorgeous, but you didn't realize that your husband was a doctor, that you would have to spend time on the landscaping. I'm sorry you didn't realize it and that it was taking all of your summer evenings and you're spending too much time. Yes, that's what the landscaping is about. So let's get you out of this house. Let's get you to another house where you don't have to spend all your nights on this beautiful landscaping. And, um, so let's do that for you. It's a love it or leave it guarantee as long as it's done in the first three months. Now, if you get a transfer and you have to go to another state, that's a different story. Yeah. It's because you feel you made a bad choice. I want to honor that because we never want to sell you a house that you shouldn't have bought. It, we don't want that kind of bad karma. So we yeah. want to help you and get it corrected. That was really cool. I, again, I've, I've, you know, these kinds of things, you know, I've done now 80 or so interviews and, you're bringing stuff up that has not come up on the show before. So I, I love it. I've never heard of this love it or leave it. How many, and look, I'll tell you, me and my wife, we almost, we talk about it often. We almost bought a house because of the kitchen. The kitchen was just so amazing. I and mean, it was super high tech. And we walked in there like, oh my God. And, um, but you know, the, the lower level kind of smelled like mold and, you know, and, but we almost bought it. So um, thank God we didn't. How many times has has this happened to you? So you, we know that you've had to buy one house. Um, the lover to leave it. How many times? How many people have exercised that? None. 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 I'll bet you. I would imagine that you know when you're at your listing presentation and you can see somebody kind of waffling, um, uh, and then you you know uh, this this tactic I would think would just seal up the deal for you. Well. The listing appointment is for them to list with us. The love it or leave it is for somebody that is a buyer, right? So uh, I got it. Okay. People Sorry. are exiting the state. They're not going to be buying again. But this is strictly a benefit to the buyer because when you buy something from Sears, you don't like it. You can return it. Yep. The problem with the house is you can't return it. So to take that away and, and take away the risk of, well, if you don't like it, we'll take care of you. We will help you buy another house and we will sell it for you at no cost to our part of the commission. I love it. Okay, listen, last question here. Um, I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go get today? Well, without question, I would get the model Millionaire Real Estate Agent, which is being rewritten right now, but that's the book I would recommend. And then your cheapest way to get started, which is basically free, is to get on the phone and just start calling people and ask if they are thinking of buying or selling and keep calling and keep calling and keep calling. That's it. Just make phone calls. I agree. And look, if anybody wants a free, everybody should read that book at least once. Uh, and most people read that book twice uh, or, or, or once every year. Um, if you want a free copy, you can use our link. Just go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive and get a free copy. Hey, Kathy. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Kathy. All right. Hey, Kathy, listen, again, um, hopefully there's some talent out there that's listening to this show. How do they reach you? What's, what's a good way for people to reach out and to say either thank you or, hey, listen, I would love to work with you? Oh, gosh, that would be so cool. Um, it would be my pleasure to receive a phone call at 866-OWN-THIS, which is, um, I have to figure out what that number is. <laughs> Oh, Let, me see if I can help. Let me see if I can help. Oh, oh crap. 866-696-8447 or email us at info, I-N-F-O, at K-A-T-H-Y 
T O T H dot com and go blue. <laughs> Boom. Hey, so look, and, and everybody, even if you can't work with Kathy, maybe you're in a different state or a different country, send her an email and say thank you for coming on the show. You know, we she spent 40 minutes of her life with us, and she's, uh, you know, she's a celebrity in her market. Kathy, thanks again for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. God bless. All right, we'll talk to you soon.